Hey, I hope you well. I recently went to the Benigo Art Gallery to go and see this painting and I ended up getting distracted by this. Do you ever plan things out to the nth degree and then get distracted by something shiny and find something way cooler? Look at the same. Regional Victoria is not playing when it comes to art galleries. They rival some of the biggest galleries in the world and they're free. You don't have to pay anything. And there's no one there. There's like 12 people there going a weekday. I was planning on sketching, doing a live sketch, but I still am getting really overwhelmed by the idea of drawing in public. Although I am getting a little bit closer to being okay with that. So I didn't sketch, but I found a bunch of cool things that I'm going to sketch later in the week and make little videos from. But win-win. I wrote down a bunch of stuff to say and um, my cat is sitting on my notes, so... <laughs> Worst assistant ever. So I went to see the Doré painting, but uh, there's another exhibition on at the Bendigo Gallery right now called Designing Australia. Uh, did I say that right? Honestly, I didn't really expect to be as excited as I was about what was in that exhibition. I ended up crying. In a good way. It is good, good crying. Also, I'm Our Lady of a Thousand Tears. I see a cute dog or cat and I will, I don't, the tears aren't streaming, but I do well up all the time. It's kind of embarrassing. Also, let me just say, if you ever want to go to a gallery and just see one painting and walk in and look at that thing for five minutes and then walk straight out, you're allowed. No one's in charge of you. You can spend as much or as little time in a gallery as you like. I personally get overwhelmed real quick in um, a space like that, and that's okay. Sometimes I go places for 10 minutes and then I leave. So on the way to see the Doré painting, I got kind of distracted by I can't actually explain the chokehold that landscape paintings have on me. I don't know what it is. It's some weird form of escapism, I think. But I think that's my job right now, is to figure out why I love landscape painting so much. And it's a good job. There's something about landscape paintings that feels like a movie to me. That always, always, always make me well up. It's sort of like this isn't the only moment like all your problems right now can't last forever and I think especially when landscape paintings are old or historical especially paintings of mountains because that landscape was here millions of years before humans were and it's gonna be here maybe the same amount of time after we're gone so none of our problems really matter as much as we think they do cheerful nihilism I guess <laughs> so I kept walking through this exhibition and it was one thing after another was just sick it was amazing I kept getting really excited by the things that I was seeing it led me into this room <laughs> that was playing ACDC and you're through indie perfect primo my favorite one thing you need to know about me is that I'm an old bogan and I lived in central Australia for a long time so both of those bands my fave I've never really been that honestly like moved by photography <laughs> walked into this little room and it was like ah! it was sick Rennie Ellis is an Australian photographer from Melbourne I'm gonna do another video that's a deep dive on her because sounds like a mad dog I'm pretty sure he was ACDC's photographer in the 70s and 80s photos were mint it was like all of my favorite things I immediately wanted to do a burnout just seeing them <laughs> and I love seeing depictions of First Nations people that are like different narratives to what we see in the news all the time. You know, actually people just shredding, having a good time. And the next room after that had a, a sick video from Awanja Arts. That was the best painting of the Queen's visit from Vincent Namajira, who's Albert Namajira's great grandson. Can't imagine like Central Australian flies zipping around the Queen. So for some reason, 
in this photography exhibition. I actually welled up. I actually teared up. I've never done that with photography before ever. I don't know what it was. Maybe because I'm such a bogan and it was like the core of like, I don't know, just, just like people having a beer and having a good time. And there's some really cool photos of like people at the footy and sharpies and bull party in the 80s. It was wild. Recently, I found an old uh, film camera, like a 110 film camera. It was 20 bucks. I don't know if you can see that. For some reason, at the moment, I'm really into photography of like all kinds. I've never, honestly, I know this probably sounds horrible, but I've never really seen it as art, 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 art before, but it really is. It really could give you the same nostalgia and hit you in the same spot as any painting or well, sculpture ever could. Alongside Brittany Ellis's photos, there were some of the most amazing paintings and ceramics and sculptures ever. Hello, ceramic teapot of Dame Edna Everidge. The tea comes out of her mouth hole and her head is the spout. It was wild. This landscape really got me because it was the scale of this little fella down here having a little camp right next to what I assume is the East Max. And it made me real homesick for Alice Springs, but that landscape of painting really looking at that, that's the same feeling that you have when you're there. It's like, oh yeah, anxiety, all your problems, they just don't really matter. Because the East Max have been there about a million gabillion years longer than your problems have been. And they'll be here long after your problems are over. So it's like, it doesn't really matter. Everything's fine. <laughs> but when I get overwhelmed like this, I have to go outside and touch grass. For real, for real. Like I'm sort of in a quiet area because I get just like <laughs> So I went outside to the park next to the gallery and there was really quite a pungent stench. It really stings the nostrils. The park was full of bats. I am obsessed with bats. Bats are one of my favourite creatures in the world. Middle of the day, hanging in the trees. Bendigo, my friends, is an autumnal goth wonderland. Let me tell you, you don't have to go to England, although I'm really upset that I can't afford to go there right now. Bendigo is a great cheap alternative. <laughs> it's not like a 75 hour flight. There are bats in the park in the daytime. It does smell quite a large amount like bat piss, but that's okay. It was at this point, outside in the park, after I'd been to the gallery and I really needed a pee pee that I realized I had never even seen the Doré painting that I went there to see in the first place. I didn't even see it. I was like, shit, I'm definitely not going back in there. And I got so much out of that little 30, 40 minute visit that I don't feel like I missed out on anything. Like I have this new thing now that I love and I'm probably gonna do to death. And I really left feeling like refueled on kind of joy. And, and I felt like I have shit to do. Like, I got painting projects and photography projects to work on now and going to the art gallery and seeing things that I didn't even know were there really helped get that emotion. So I guess like you can just go there without even knowing why you're there and find one, just one little nugget of like, oh, look at this joyful new reason to actually keep living. Even if you don't paint, even if you don't, you're not into photography, like I wasn't before I went in there. Might be some, some little treasure in there that will add to your life in some lovely way. Go to the art gallery and maybe you'll tear up and have a little sook in front of complete strangers like I did and be too scared to draw in front of them. <laughs> Goose. Oh my god, what a dumb thing to be scared of. Literally, who cares? Maybe I'll go to the gallery and like just sketch stick figures or something. <laughs> okay, that's all. Bye now.